All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go pull in a new project. It's actually my dad's vehicle. I need to start using my GoPro to film so there's not, I think it does a wonderful job with the shaking. Um, so it's a 2009, I have to double check that. Jeep Wrangler with a lift on it. Um, it's got about, what, 34, 35s on it. Soft top. We're gonna pull this thing in here. Plenty of room. It's got 99,000 miles on it. My dad just picked this thing up. Interior smells like cigarettes. Stinks like total garbage. Drivetrain seems pretty solid. Um, apparently they had a bunch of off-road lights on it. And it torched the fuse panel. Not exactly sure what's going on with all that. Here, one second. Okay, sorry guys. All right, so it's got the little 3.8 V6. Seems to run pretty decent. First thing we noticed was the battery is loose. Um, we do have the check engine light that you probably noticed that's on is a system low voltage. And all these extra straps, that's sort of giving me a, giving me a pause there. That's, I'm sure that's going to the chassis. But something happened with the electrical system, so we're gonna have to really look into this thing. It does have what looks to be aftermarket headlights. We probably don't wanna get rid of those. I guarantee it's probably some high intensity discharge crap that's done something. But anyways, here we go. It is a 2009 and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. So. We, Definitely got a deal on it, but there's some little issues. The tires are sort of worn out. The soft top does leak in the rain. Um, again, the interior, the seats, and the cab just stinks, but I think with a, um, this is my dad's Jeep. He wants to just replace the soft top with the hard top. And then, but that's pretty cool to just take that soft top off. That's so cool. Sort of like a convertible. Um, doesn't matter about the license plate, but <laughs> I think I showed it earlier. Anyway, it's actually still in their name, so. But again, the interior, it's just, it looks, it's pretty dirty. Oof, golly, it just stinks like cigarettes. Oof, it really does. I'd air it out in here. I don't want all of our stuff to start to smell like cigarettes though. But anyways, there's the intro to the Jeep. The 09 Jeep Wrangler. It's pretty cool. It's got a lift kit on it. Uh, I'm sure there's other surprises around the corner, but we're gonna dive in. All right, y'all, y'all know the fleet. We've got a newcomer and it's the Jeep. So, trying to keep everything running as it stands. We are going to, first of all, address the, excuse me, I'm burping as soon as I start recording. 
Battery seems to be undercharged, so we're gonna investigate that. I'm assuming this thing might have some sort of a slow parasitic draw. Um, like I said in the last intro video, this battery is loose. There's a lot of extra, so we gotta run down all these extra connections. Um, another thing I've noticed here is this, and forgive the lack of light, but this actually houses the the wiring harness, and this right here in my hand is actually two wires. So that is at risk, and, it, and it, this is supposed to strap, everybody knows you know, the Jeep strap right there, basically hooks up, there's a little rod right here. And again, forgive the lack of light. But um, anyway, so that's another thing there. And there's these switches right here. Um, who knows what they do, what they did. This one feels bad. I need to get these out of the vehicle. That's overall a pretty cool project. The interior stinks so bad of cigarettes. Absolutely horrible, but it's a pretty cool Jeep, actually. It's freaking legit. All right, y'all, the battery is still uh, not charged up, so I know almost for sure there's a, some sort of a draw or something. I did see on this ground strap, which as you can see, is very odd because there's extra ground straps that somebody put on here. But what are you noticing here? What do you think happened right here, guys? It looks like it got hot. So the clue that we already have is that something on this circuit or something through this part of the chassis, who knows what this is, but this is definitely a big clue. But we got everything disconnected. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, charge up the battery. I'm gonna put this up here, but that's a very interesting clue um, as to what's going on here. Not to mention, again, this just weird sort of, here, let me get this, let me make sure this is legit. As you can see, the, the wiring's a little bit weird. Not that weird, but no, this is sort of weird. We gotta follow these big connections, figure out what's going on there. Another thing we noticed, Chase and I here earlier, he was out here, um, is that um, we had a lot of washer fluid maybe spilled in this little tub area, which we've got flipped up. Um, and again, there's a little door here somewhere. Um, oh, I see the, the door here is right there. There we go. So it looks like a wash, a whole bottle of wash fluid was spilled, dried, and then all the rainfall that's leaking through the canopy back here, which is dampening the mat, is sort of reconstituting this washer fluid maybe because it is just blue as blue can be. <laughs> blue as blue can be. Blue as blue can be. And as you can see, my darling, representing, oh, there it is. Genuflect on that Aladdin. Look at that. So we got a weird situation. There's no wa rear washer fluid tank or anything back here. So it was definitely something that was spilled, but we got it drying. Got the canopy drying. This whole, the biggest issue with this thing so far is this weird electrical issue. And the fact the interior is just trashed, but we're gonna get, get her done as they say. All right, y'all, we are working on our Jeep Wrangler here. Uh, my dad's new, was it 09? So many different years. Yeah, 2009 Jeep Wrangler, uh, four door. It's got the 3.8 um, electrical issues we're trying to figure out. Got my dad's ammeter here. It's got a wonderful, um, so I'm gonna read each major uh, ground cable coming off. Obviously this one, previously melted they replaced it with this one this, this is going to the same exact spot over here which is right there that bad boy right there I should check and clean that connection as well probably um, I did clean all the connections here this isn't the best setup with all the, with the stud and the stack it's not a bad at all but um, the ones I got for the plot truck are gonna be a lot better 
Um, it's just lots of opportunity for corrosion. Again, it's not that much different, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's a big toss up. I have no idea. Um, who knows? Keep, keep your connections clean, you'll be fine. So this is a ground going over to there. Obviously you've got three main powers. The fact that there's three is kind of interesting, honestly. So this is going to the main fuse box. One's going to the starter. I got to track down where this other one is going. Um, it almost looks like a winch thing. So I need to figure that out. Um, there's a loop, there's a wire loop here that's something. But one thing I did find besides the, uh, the HID lamps that are on here, which need to come off, which feed into the original harness, you need a separate power. So just asking for electrical trouble. Um, again, we got our little alternator here. And what happened to this thing is it torched the main fuse block there um, due to over loading the circuitry because I think they had a bunch of lights on here. And then as you can see here, from what I saw is you have this myriad of switches. Um, you have this ground here. This doesn't look good. Um, you can't really see it, but this comes out here. This is another ground down here. Uh, I wish I had my flash on, but you can see that um, here and there. So we're gonna check all that and then it actually goes down and underneath here and underneath and I gotta figure out what it's actually going to, but we're gonna attract on all these miscellaneous wires, get rid of them. Oh, by the way, this lighter, when I peeled off the side cover was lodged right here. It looked like a bomb ready to go off. So we're slowly picking this thing apart, getting the, uh, Get the electrical fi issue figured out, and then um, then I'm gonna get outside and get the seats out of it, so I can get those to dad. So, meanwhile, we've got it's snowing outside with all this cotton. That's a beautiful day. camera's pretty amazing over and out all right y'all we are back on this jeep um it's been a couple days since i last looked at it it's a 2009 uh excuse me jeep wrangler with the four door and uh i haven't fully uh done my uh parasitic draw test because my multimeter is sort of messing up and i've i'm probably repeating myself in the last videos that i've done but um I need to basically, well, the long and the short of it is, it's been sitting here with everything connected, fully charged for one, two, three days. And it took my little trickle charger, it took it just 10, 15 minutes tops for it to get fully charged again. So I know there's something going on, but it's not as massive as which, you know, sometimes is a pain in the butt to find because if it's something small. But I think it has something to do with all these weirdo wires. Um, I'll film more of that when we get to it. But um, <clears throat> what we're going to do next is basically take out these seats. Um, we're just going to do one at a time. I figured I'd just start with... Uh, this sound like that. Oh, looks like an 18. Yeah, it's 18. Oh. Right, give me one sec, guys. Anyways, we're just gonna buzz this passenger front seat out first. It's the simplest. Then I will uh, probably do the back. There we go. Let's do 18, 18. And then I'll do the front, driver front last, just so it's not a pain in the butt to drive it in and out. But, all right, let's do it. Sorry guys, I'm gonna really try to film at the same time.
What I need to do guys is spray a little bit of probably lube from the bottom if I can see if I can see them but um, I definitely don't want to strip out threads so I think I'll probably just spray some penetrant oil after I get them cracked that should help a lot and then I'll do it by hand if I need to because um, my little gun and I, I forgot that my my big half inch gun has been uh, let me do this so everything can be seen you might think I'm this gun is, uh, went kaput. So anyways, slowly getting these seats out and then we're gonna rip the carpet out. Dad's got these lights already here. We're gonna replace these. I'm still trying to figure out what's the electrical issue. So we're kind of leaving all the original stuff plugged in just so we can get an accurate roadmap as to possibly where the circuit is that we're getting the draw from. And then we'll go from there. But. As you can see, she's ready for the trail. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, we got this uh, chair out pretty easily. Once we cracked each bolt loose and some WD-40 went in there, bolts came out pretty easily and they are there. Um, but last but not least, we just got this lower uh, seat belt anchor. So I'm gonna remove that and uh, get myself a Torx bit. Get this seat sorta of out of here. I guess probably just i probably leave it in there, but um, dad's gonna pick them up tomorrow. So I guess I should get them all back behind the Jeep here and just, just sort of leave them. But uh, I'm just hanging out. Gonna cook a uh, chuck, chuck eye steak. A little piece of meat that's well marbled and it'll be interesting. Um, so it's gonna cook it like a big old steak and uh, get her done. Heck yeah, I like this view. So, got a new iPhone, or a new phone, finally. And, uh, yeah, this zoom out feature is pretty cool. But I know I'm just going on and on, so. Let's get this thing taken care of. You hurt? All right, y'all, we are finally getting a readout. Um, this thing does not seem to have a that big of a draw. Um, Point two. It's kind of on the edge. I think it does have a little draw coming from somewhere. So it goes up to four milliamps. I'm not sure, but if you watch what I open up the door. So what I got going here is I have the multimeter in between the negative cable and the negative post. If you can see um, what's going on here. And then it's settled down. And then if we open up the door, we jump up to 1.2 amps, which makes sense if you open the door. Um, and it takes about a minute and a half, two minutes to, to sort of go back down. Um, well, it happened a lot faster that time. It's still not conclusive, because again, it's at, um, this is 400 milliamps, 500, the minimum for this vehicle is probably should be 50. It doesn't have a lot of electronic stuff on it, but, so right now we're at 400 milliamps, still, things are still awake, etc. And then it does die down here after a minute to, um, there you go. So that's like, um, 10 milliamps, four milliamps, two, three, 30, you know, sorry, 20, 30, I'm trying to read it as I see it, but, oh, there it is, 0.5. So it does it seem to have a little bit of a draw and it's so, I don't like that my meter is having so much trouble reading it, um, you know, which might indicate where it's coming from, but I'm gonna let this thing sit here for, for a while and see if it, if it dies down, if it keeps doing what it's doing, I think I am gonna go ahead and maybe start out with unplugging the headlights, um, disconnecting all the switches at the dash, um, you know, getting rid of all of these weird ground. You see how many grounds that were on this thing? Um, you know, just it's just a weird. But yeah, it does have a little bit of a draw. So 40 milliamp, 30 milliamp. Goes up to five, as you saw. And that's why the battery's draining down a little bit. Based on my test. So I could be all wrong, but uh, 
slowly getting this thing figured out. So, over now. All right, y'all, we're gonna cook this big old chuck steak. Um, salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of rosemary on one side. It's gonna get torched off. I didn't do, I should have done that after I put it um, off to the side. I'm gonna sear it off and then put it off to the side to get up to temp, put some butter on it. And again, I should have put the rosemary on after, but it'll be fine. We'll get it on there and have a good flavor. Have a good flavor. It's a good view right there. It's the door opening. 1.2 amps. Close the door. Take everything a minute. Just wanted to show you, Dad, what it's looking like. Our 400 milliamps, I believe, I think. Um, I looked it up last night. Oops. And then this should drop off to 0 0.01 through five. And I did see it go to 0 0.06 once, just once. So it's got something going on somewhere, but it's not, uh, it's not a devastating uh, draw. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, you can you can see the vehicle sort of powering down. One of the modules or one of the somethings, and it could be something, you know, I don't know. There's a sh something's drawing current, and sometimes modules can do that. But again, that's um, I don't really know what's going on quite yet. But I did unplug both of the headlights, and no change at all. I did notice with that I think these are our LED and then this is a separate power source for the um, the ring but of course since one of them was out I had to replace them anyway but you know we're sort of whittling things down on imagining whatever's causing the draw has something to do with the chassis ground that this is going that this is fueling and again, um, that same ground was overused. <clears throat> I've got all these switches um, disconnected. This all removed, but this is all disconnected as well. And this other wiring basically just goes, I still don't know where, what it's actually doing because it comes up below this area. So, um, but it runs and drives and doesn't have any drivability or performance issues. So whatever it is, is something probably having to do with the electrical meltdown. It's some, something somewhere. Of course, just had the door open. So anyway, I just want to show you that dad. Sorry for the long video. What's up brother? I just wanted to show you what I'm working on out here. My dad just got this Jeep. Just ripped out the seats cause they need to be cleaned up. Cause it's, they like, everything stinks in here and just pulling out the carpet. And by the way, man, this chess game is freaking slug fest bro barely holding on man it's super complicated yesterday super complicated right now and uh looking forward to coming over man you'll beat me over the board because you make good moves super fast bro all right guys dad's jeep i got the new headlights in it i did replace the connectors i didn't do really any filming on it it was just splicing the wires but connectors not no biggie and I haven't really filmed that well at all on this project, just due to time, time constraints. So, um, we pulled the carpet, pulled the seats, dad, we threw the carpet out, dad's took on the seats, washed them, and, um, we just need to vacuum it out. He's going to go ahead and do all the rest of it at, at his house. I'm going to get started on his, on his big white truck, but we're just going to cruise it over. It's in the neighborhood here. So. But uh, we did a big once over. We'll see more of this Jeep for sure. So over and out. It's a beautiful, beautiful summer evening here in Anchorage, Alaska. All right, guys, doing a little camera work here. We're just backing out. Trying not to hit anything. I'm trying to make sure this stool doesn't tip over. All right, guys, we are cruising.
check on it. But. All right, guys, it's a terrible video. It's not even auto focusing. Sorry, guys. Over now. Here back at the Jeep. Dad's cleaned everything up. Working on it one piece at a time. Looks absolutely fantastic. Three sixty view. Oh, the wind is 